So a while back, I started working on this fancy dry kiln that would eat wood waste. As a small sawmill, I produce a surprisingly large amount of waste. But I like to think of waste as stuff that people haven't figured out what to do with yet. Built into a 40 foot high cube is a boiler room that will run the fully automatic and electronically controlled heater. And before I even get into that, I need power hooked up. Not just any power, my sawmill is off grid and runs on a small hydroelectric plant, so I'll be working with higher voltages as I run the power from the nearest connection point, and then working on transforming that power into a lower, more usable voltage. Since I used up the entire budget on the boiler itself, there's almost no money left for secondary components like transformers and switches and wire. So I'll be doing quite a bit of salvage in this video. This transformer here I actually salvaged out of another sawmill's junk pile. He was more than happy to give it to me. It had a wasp nest in it and there was a few pieces missing. So the thing about this transformer is it's heavy. It weighs 80 to 100 pounds, something like that. So the way it mounts to the wall is on four lag bolts like that. So what I've done is I've just added about an inch of plywood. Now I gotta get these four bolts in there. still need to find one of these. One more of those and then I'm ready to wire. So this is another mess I need to clean up here. That's a project for another day. What I do need is this. This is not connected to anything, looks like. Looks like it just does a loop. This line will be super handy inside the actual kiln. So you take that screw out. Oh, it's really looped in there, let's see. Of course I'm trying to pull it through these 110 lines. Everything is really raw. All right, I just broke my plastic there. So I just salvaged that. I've got a couple of little wire mount pieces, some end clamps here. These are the main part that I wanted. This part on screws here. I'm by no means an expert electrician. So this is just what I'm doing. Again, keep in mind, this is like an industrial use, not house wiring. So I've got my components here. And now, see if the thread size is, ooh, nice. Thread size is perfect. So I'm using a three strand armor tech cable. You have to unwind it. Just give it a snap and then I'll crimp the end. Now I've got a short piece of armor that goes between two terminal boxes. Once you get the inner lining started, depending on how strong it is or how strong you are, you can usually just pull it. So yeah, inside we've got three wires uh, for three phase. It's wrapped in a clear casing that's been painted. And you can see the paint is starting to come off this. This is used wire, it's not brand new. But because it's made of copper, its quality is really high, so I'm not super worried about that. And then you've got your ground. Most of the time taking off about a half inch. All right. So now you've got three wires and a ground. Ready to go. That's good. So, if you come underneath, I went ahead and marked 
lines one, two, and three, and four. Now I really do need to find that copper clamp. So the other day I asked my dad about that tiny little copper clip that I'm looking for. Look in the fallen down shed across from the mill. Him being the historical record keeper of this property, he pointed me in the direction of this shed. Let me show you guys. You see it? Probably don't see anything except trees, right? Oh. Wow. This is the shed that he pointed me in the direction of. In fact, he actually specified it should be in a yellow bucket on the right. It's in a yellow bucket. Similarly to this one. And I now see there are three yellow buckets. Hopefully the roof doesn't fall on me while we're doing this. Oh, that one didn't seal very well. Got some water damage in here. Some rusty parts. Some sort of industrial wire clamp. rustier than the other one. It's just a bucket of rust. No! Alright, maybe there's one more yellow bucket. Yellow bucket. Specify it was yellow. Yellow, yellow, yellow. Uh, I don't know, folks. Seems like a dead end here. Shed uh, fell down years ago and it has no roof on it. Which is why everything's rusted out. Yeah, it's seen better days. Everything in here needs to be salvaged or tossed. Most of it will be tossed. Okay, so no luck. I've decided to invest my time and energy in this shed. It needs a big cleanup anyway because I need to fix it up. It needs a new roof, it needs a new wall, it basically needs a new shed. So I'm gonna clean this entire area. Maybe I'll find that one component that I'm looking for in the process. Either way, I'll get something done rather than just wandering around looking through piles of junk. So the power is off here. We turn it off at the power plant and we've got our 480 lines here. We're gonna tidy this up while we're tying in power that runs out to the dry kiln. So yeah, stay tuned for that. I find interesting here is you have power coming in from the powerhouse here yeah. and then you have power coming from the shop on the other side but then what is this oh. looks like it comes from the shop and it's one single phase but what is it maybe it was just never hooked up and then you also have these stragglers what are all these things some multi-generational issues happening Somebody here. Somebody knows. <laughs> so we've uncovered these things and as you can see they're just bolt clamps together here. Lines apart and we fed them through this junction box which we've mounted to the wall here. A piece of plywood. Little things like decently stable. That one's gonna be pretty tricky so I think I should get that over with. It's just a lot of wires in there. Okay, so that was not easy, but I managed to get all of these taped up. So that looks good. I just need to put a cover on that and then it's relatively safe. It's getting dark out. Just need to wire up this side in the secan here. 
something so that I don't have live wires that are not connected to anything. Uh, I'm gonna wire it into the switch, but I'm not gonna put any fuses in the switch. This stuff's pretty straightforward. It's a lot easier to work with than the old stuff. Pull test and tuck that pigtail aside. I'd turn the light on for you guys, but I can't. I don't have any power. Okay, hurry up, because I don't want to do this with a headlamp. Firm. Okay, so where we're at is I got this uh, enclosed switch box. This entire box I got second hand, and it's all salvage. Actually, this was attached to the transformer. So I got this tied together, but there's a chance that this is actually set up for 220 right now, so this is not the correct plug if you want to visibly show everyone that you're running 220. So I just want to make sure that uh, what I have is what I think I have. So right now, this is set up with 110, 110, neutral, making 220, I think. Hey David, I got the uh, muffler bearing on the 966 lubed up. How's your fuse box going? I've been looking for this tiny copper clip. It's like this little finger with like a clamp on it. Without that thing, I can't wire the transformer at all. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I think I got one of those in my pocket. You'll never guess where I found this thing. It was in the Folly Downey shed in a little tiny yellow bucket. I was in there looking for muffler bearings and I was like, hey, copper. Yeah, these are like 15 bucks on Amazon. Can I just, uh, I just, I need that. Oh. Well, I can see you've got stuff to do, so I'm gonna uh, take a order for it. Yeah. For print. Uh huh. So these plaques are super important. Without them, you would have no idea how to wire this up, and you'd just be guessing. That being said, talking about wiring diagrams is a lot like the teachers in Charlie Brown. That sounds a lot like clearly. Wow. So instead, I'm just going to tell you what I'm using power for. So inside the actual kiln, there's a series of fans that work to basically circulate air and also exhaust air out of the kiln. Those all run on 120. And this transformer here is kind of a dedicated way for me to get power to those. So let's wire it up. I'm not sure why they designed these to be wired upside down, but they did. The box itself is like pretty heavy. So taking it on off the wall, not as easy as you'd think. When you set them on the wall, you gotta go high enough that you can get underneath and wire them. I wouldn't want to be lying on my back trying to wire this. Nice. One more wire. Oh wow, that was smooth. Excellent. All right, it's done. Wired up. Anywhere from 100 to 240 volts. So, wow. I don't even have to wire a 110 plug. I could just plug it into a 220 and this will fix it. Hopefully nothing blows up. 